Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Reiner, your host of the Independent Doctors of Pahrump, a TV show that airs Monday night on Channel 46. I want to remind you that I am a practicing physician in Pahrump, and I'm an independent practitioner, which means I am not bought by any insurance company or corporate medicine. We provide the highest level of care. We have nurse practitioners. We have other physicians, specialists who come to our office. Please come visit me. I'm at 1316 East Calvada here in the heart of Pahrump. Thank you. Okay, we're back, back from the break, and uh, thanks, Louie, for that call, and I guess I missed Ray's call at the beginning. You were telling me about he was ranting and raving about the jail again. Yeah. So, well, you know, he's a crusader. Ray is a crusader. Yeah. Well, nothing wrong with that. And no, no, no. We tried I, to stay I, apolitical. I was just saying that, you know, being down there at the jail <clears throat> taking care of the inmates, I mean, the big issue is, is that tug of war between, you know, what's real and not real and what they do and, and not do. And, and so the dietary, you know, you brought up the weight and the weight gain and the weight loss. You know, we've gone, if, if an inmate complains that they're hypoglycemic or things of that nature, then we can go to the kitchen and we can make certain changes in their diet. Um, but I mean, they're on a they're on a fixed budget. I mean, this isn't this isn't hotel, you know, um, the Ritz Carlton. I mean, these guys have have you know, and and uh, when we see a disease process, we make a change in what's going on. Um, but we have to work within the things. I mean, if we give somebody a knee brace, as the as they they, they tell us, I mean, there's there's a, a place for concealment of contraband and mm -hmm. stuff yes. of that nature. Right. So we have to be very very careful with what we're doing. Hey, Chuck, how you doing tonight? Hey, Doc, great. I got to tell you a story. A couple months ago, I was at a meeting with the DA and some commissioners, and Louie was there. Well, <laughs> Louie gets in this pissing contest with a commissioner. I start getting stressed out, get angina, and I got to leave. <laughs> so Louie's not going to die. I'm going to die because of it. <laughs> <laughs> so let me see if I understood that. So Louie's anger problem gave you a heart attack? Exactly. I got <laughs> secondary stress heart attack from Louie. Yeah. <laughs> he may be a public menace there, Chuck. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh -huh. Hey, I ran across an interesting thing on prostate cancer. They did a study, uh, John Hopkins, and uh, they did something different. Usually they try to lower testosterone in the blood, and uh, they did that, and then they... Uh, gave high amounts of testosterone, and they found remarkable success, and uh, it's in the early stages, and they don't figure, they haven't figured out how it works or how to incorporate it into a treatment thing, but uh, these are, some of them were uh, terminal uh, patients, so there's a bit of hope for us prostate cancer kind of guys. Did they mention estrogen levels? Yeah, uh, they didn't go into detail. It was just a one-page report I read. Uh, because when you give high-dose testosterone, there's a process in the body called aromatization where the actual molecule testosterone gets converted to estrogen. So not only do you create testosterone levels that might be 800, 1,000, but you create <clears throat> estrogen levels that are 400. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... You know, it's all that relative thing. So maybe, and I don't know. I'm just guessing that maybe the high estrogen level is what is mm -hmm. um, modifying the the prostate cancer, um, as opposed to just testosterone. Mm -hmm. Meaning you're probably going to interfere with free testosterone to some degree. Oh, you would. You'd have to. Hey, Chuck, could you bring that by the office tomorrow? Sure. Thank you. Yeah, I would like to read that. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, from the Telegraph, uh, but yeah, definitely. In, in fact, if you guys would leave me your uh, email or something, I'd send you these. I don't send a lot of them, but 
Yeah, I put it in the spam category. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> along, along with my uh, chemtrail DVD. Yeah, no, I, and I do apologize to you. I, you know, um, Ray has mentioned that, and I, and I do need to do that. But I just have so much uh, other stuff on my plate. But, you know, every time I look up in the sky and I see chemtrails, I think of you. So um, By the time you look at them, I'll, I'll be... My ashes will be spread out with the poof dirt and the rough. <laughs> you'll, you'll be causing somebody an allergy attack. Absolutely. Joe. I'll be a bacteria menace. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so how much arsenic do you think is in the ground because we were farming all that cotton? For yeah, that's, that's, I bet there's a lot. I bet there's a lot. Yeah. That absolutely is right. There's, there's a lot of stuff. So, I mean, and I don't really test for it, but that might not be a bad thing mm. to do mm. arsenic and lead and some, you know, heavy metals on, on some people. Um, well, your arsenic's definitely going to be up there. Yeah. I bet yeah, it is. okay, I'll, I'll get off the phone. Ray's got to call back. Okay. Thanks, Chuck. Okay, bye-bye. Ray calling you to say he's going to call back, so, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I think arsenic, I didn't mention it, but, you know, there used to be a ton of cotton farming here. Yeah. And how much, of, you know, in those days, nobody really checked those levels. Has the soil been tested? It's been... Interesting thing for me to know, coming from New York, with totally different crops, it wouldn't have come up. Yeah. We do heavy metal testing on people with uh, neurologic diseases, right. with arthritic diseases. It has a number of manifestations. Mm -hmm. And some famous people have died from heavy metal poisoning. So right. uh, how big a deal is it? Well, I, like I said, I think it, you're right. It depends on the patient complaints, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, right. Um, if you're running up into end zones and you can't get the, you know, nothing comes up here, um, heavy metal testing is one of those things mm -hmm. that yep. is not a bad thing to do. Chromium, lead, um, and arsenic, and a few other things. I yep. think you order it as a panel. Yes, uh, you do. And Strontium is in that group, and yeah. yeah, there are several of them. And the radiation out <clears> here <throat> is not as bad. You know, I have a couple of Geiger counters that I've driven mm -hmm. around, and, oh. and, and uh, there's two types of radiation. There's RADs and there's sieverts, and, and, and RADs are basically and a, a accumulated dose, dose and sieverts is a health risk. Right. So, and they, the normal background radiation is less than, uh, than 2.5 micro sieverts per hour. Um, we can talk about this another time. Ray's on the phone. Ray. Hey, Doc. Welcome back. It's nice to see all three of you guys, man. Yeah. Wonderful. What's with the arsenic? I don't understand. Um, arsenic, I think, was used as a, in some fertilizers and some of the other pesticides that were mm -hmm. around. It was a the, stabilizer. In the pesticides. Yeah. It's a stabilizer. So had been a lot of cotton farming going on here, you know, out yeah. in um, Late Mount, 50s and 60s. Right. Yes. So, it, you know, when the poof dirt gets stirred up and people doing that, how much of that is in the air that affects people and things of that nature? And the water supply, things of that nature, even though they test for radon and other stuff. But the last water report I saw that they, they sent me was from years ago, and everything was right up at the limit, and it was years ago. So I don't know mm. where it is currently. Um, as, I, as I was reading that last water report, I wasn't impressed. Um, so what are you saying? In order to grow cotton? they were using arsenic in order to promote the growth of cotton? I wasn't yes. aware of that. Um, it is not used to promote the growth, but as Dr. Craig said, it's a stabilizer, so it's used in certain in products. And back in the 50s and 60s, like asbestos and a lot of these products, they knew about arsenic poisoning. Well, you but had DDT that they used sure. freely yeah. back then, too. So. Sure. How much of that's in the soil, I don't know, but it, it, but I would imagine because of associated with farming and cotton, it has been associated. It, there's something that's going off in my head that tells me that it's been associated with cotton farming, and, and it could very well be in the soil. Do you know where the last cotton gin was out here? Uh, Dad, I thought it was out in um, Hafen's place, right? No, Rump Nugget. That's where the cotton gin was. I'll be good ahead. 1880, I think, is the last really? time they huh. they had a full co cotton crop, and that's where the cotton gin was. Yeah. And then Binion wound up buying the, the property, and hmm. the rest is history. Yeah, the rest is silver, right? <laughs> hey, uh, I mentioned earlier about the problems in the jail, Doc. You're the, you're the doctor for the jail. you got to look into this, some, of the, some of this stuff. Uh, the fellow that got released, uh, he said he was so cold, He's diabetic. He was so cold, he got home and his toes are blue. And it's a serious matter. And they've got to take care of these people. You know, you've got to, uh, when you're in there, tell these guards, you know, you, these people, they're human beings in here. 
Right. If they complain about something, I've got diabetes and I need something warm for my feet, the guards have to act on it. And also, as far as the food, I heard from people getting released that there's food fights in there because they're not getting enough food. And you're in a position when you go in there to find out what's going on and, and tell these guards, look, we got to treat these people like human beings. Well, yeah, and, and we do work with the kitchen on, on, that, on that issue, but at the same time, um, they make a lot of their own food there. They make a lot of their own breads. They do a lot of their own uh, cooking in there. Um, but a lot of these people have very extensive diets on the outside, okay? They eat a lot of fast food. They may be binging. Uh, there may be a lot of factors. A lot of that, sugar. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of things that go into why they're, they're, gaining, they're gaining weight on the outside, but when they come in there, they don't get quite the fat content. They don't get quite the other stuff that they're getting on the outside. Um, I've seen some of the meals that they have, and it's pizza, it's cookies, it's you know peanut butter, it's it's something along that line. But um, when someone comes in and says they have diabetes, we go to the kitchen, we alter, we do the testing to confirm it, and we alter their diet. If they come in and they say they're being underfed, we've had some insure that's come to the office, and we've given it to to some of those people that may need a little more nutrition based on on what they're doing. So. Um, they're encouraged to go to the kiosk and put their complaints in. It goes right to the Department of Health and Human Services who issues us a letter to see that, that patient. I mean, we're there seeing 25 to 30 people on a day handling their complaints. Um, if we can't handle them, we, we send them out to the appropriate specialist. So um, it, it's all a process, Ray. We've only been there really about a month, and it continues to unfold. One of the things that we're doing now that's better than they've done in the past, we're actually doing intake on the, on the prisoners as they come in. So we're an idea of what we're up against and then telling them to put in for their visits, and we're doing better medical histories, um, and we're drawing blood there. I mean, we're doing a lot more than what was being done through months ago I promise you that I'm glad that you're pursuing the problems because I hear this on a daily basis you know I'm in court every day when they get released they come and talk to me to tell me about their problems and I'm happy that you're in there looking after some of these people because they're not all bad people a lot of these people no. are locked up on, on frivolous charges I can attest to that so thank you for helping out in the jail and uh, I had mentioned the blue toes. Maybe the doctors will, will uh, tell you about my earlier call because it's important. I want to tell this fellow that he's got to see a doctor, diabetic, and he wound up, he was in there a couple, three days, and he wound up with blue toes. So there you go. All right, I'll open up the line. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Yeah. No, and, and, and we are taking care of it. Thanks, it's, Rick. It's, it's a work in progress, but it's so much better <clears throat> than what it was. And the, the county had a lot of liability with in, uh deputies passing out medications and things of that nature, and that's not happening anymore, so. Um. Listen, in the last couple of minutes that we have, Pahrump, uh, we want to remind you that this is the cold and flu season. So take your precautions. Make sure you're taking your vitamins. Make sure you're eating well. Make sure you're drinking plenty of fluids. And for heaven's sakes, if you're sick, come in and see us. Yeah, and if you're sick, wear a mask. I mean, it doesn't prevent you from getting an illness, but it certainly does help you from spreading the illness. That's one of the things that this time of year I put in my office. So when people come in and they're sick, they can put a mask on yep. while yeah. they're in the we office. Do. Yeah. Yep. And that's the time you want to do hand washing, you know. Yeah, and, and, lots and of the, hand washing. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be with uh, the alcohol-based stuff. Mm -hmm. It can be just plain soap and water works fine. Um, and that's really what, what you want to do. And... and uh, Vitamin D is real important. That's one of vitamin the reasons. Vitamin D is very a, important. Yeah, it's yeah. a very real big important. this time of the year because you're not getting quite the sunlight. The days are shorter. It's going to, you know, the, the winter solstice is in the 22nd, 23rd. Yep. So it's, it's coming. Yeah, it's going to be the shortest day of the year. So it's important to remember that, you know, take, and, and vitamin D is fat soluble. So you can take 2,000, you know, units, uh, seven all at one time, and mm -hmm. it's going to yes. last you, you know, five to six days. So, uh, we're out of time. Great show. So Thank you for guys. If you have any here. questions, come by, Perump. Come yep. by and talk to us. Have a good night.